Well, there is no denying his status as one of the best flyweights in the world. His name is Amir Albazi, fighting out of Iraq, coming off a big win over Kai Kata France in June of 2023. It was a split decision, and a lot of the media and fan base felt like Kai Kata France had won that fight. But the only scorecards that matter, two of the three gave it to Amir Albazi, and that set him up for a big fight against Brandon Moreno. And many believe this is as well-rounded a player as we have at 125 pounds. Could just be the first Iraqi champion in UFC history. Got to take care of business here tonight. All right, here he is, my 2023 Fighter of the Year and the undisputed UFC Flyweight Champion, Alessandre Pantoja. Pro debut at 17 years of age in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Finally breaks through to win the undisputed UFC title at 33 years of age. He is as watchable and as well-rounded as any fighter in the sport. And in advance of his first title defense in our fighter meeting, he said, now the focus is getting my pound for pound due. I know I'm the best flyweight in the world. I'm out to prove that again tonight. But I want to show the masses that I can be the pound for pound king. And he might just be that guy. Well, so much UFC history has played out here at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Plenty more where that came from tonight. The athletes are ready to go. Our tale of the tape for this flyweight championship fight. We send it inside the octagon, Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Herb Dean, third man in the octagon tonight. All right, here we go. Another big night for the MMA leader from Las Vegas. Nevada's T-Mobile Arena. And a lot of seminal moments in this building. I can think of one. It was a big one for me at UFC 246. But John, also UFC 200. I got to stand across the cage from Anderson Silva in that arena. This is a place where big fights happen. And tonight, you get to stand amongst the legends at the T-Mobile Arena. here in the early going. Oh, punches and punches all to the head. Beautiful combination. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and so now he lands another combination. So it's never just one shot. There's always two or three coming behind. A lot of times people throw singular strikes, not this. Oh, he jumped guillotine right away. That guillotine is tight. That is phenomenal submission defense by this young man. Right now, it looks 
looks like he may be trying to set up an arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm, push it across, and secure it with his head. Getting tighter. Let's get those hands up here. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, he got out. How good is that? This guy is so aware. He never leaves anything long to allow for himself to get sub. And it looks as though he'll let his opponent stand up here. Yes, he will. Really good level change. Pantoja's in half guard now. This is where he wants to be. Inside the closed guard now. I mean, he went right into his full guard. What does he do to try to advance himself to give him more of an advantage on the mat? Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Pantoja. Oh, another strike lands from the top. He passes the half. Outstanding work with the ground and pound here by Pantoja. Staying offensive off of his back as he lands a strike from the bottom position. Five minutes in the books. Stop, stop, stop. Well, what a round it was, especially from a striking standpoint. DC, take us through. High-level striking. I mean, this is what people come through the doors to see. Two men stand on a quarter, chest to chest, forehead to forehead, and let it all fly. I'm surprised nobody went out, but it does excite me for the next round. You ready to fight? You ready? All right, second round underway. Oh, tags him with the straight. Nice job there by Pantoja. Lands to the body there. Oh, how about the accuracy to land right there? His opponent's wobble chair. He's hurt bad. He cannot take another shot like that. What a nasty flying knee. Oh, nice jab to the dome by Albazi. Nice leg kick. All right, keep pushing forward. Let's go. Low kick is there. Oh, guillotine, guillotine here. I think he's got it. It's deep. Good job by the champ there. Sliding back up. Now he's with his arm triangle on the opposite side. When he goes to finish, look, he's got it locked. When he goes to finish, he has to pass his body all the way to the opposite side, drop his chest to get enough pressure to finish his down. Oh, somehow he gets out. Fantastic submission, D. Well, he has expended a lot of energy going for these submissions tonight. I'm not sure his opponent is actually submittable. No, it doesn't seem like it because every time he goes for a submission, he gets close, or at least he expects to get close. But his opponent is so on his game that he's not giving him much to work with. This has been a beautiful display of grappling offensively, but also defensively. Drops down inside the now closed guard of his opponent. Let's see how patient he is as he attacks a submission or big ground and pound. Side control now. Well, landing several strikes here from the top, standing over his opponent. Good work here by Amir al -Bazi. Oh, nice. Oh, al -Bazi's going for the sub here. Ooh, that Kimura looks tight. Oh, he's got the knee on the belly. Could be trouble defensively. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. 
All right, he's got him in the north-south position here, DC. When you're in this position, however rare it may be, what are you trying to do? I'm just trying to lay on. I'm just trying to cut air from going to your body. I'm just trying to make you carry my weight. I don't necessarily want to be here. And I don't know if this guy wants to be here right now. He will use this to try to get to the next position. Don't want to be there for more reasons than one. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there on the bottom. <laughs> Focus, okay? Listen, you are not tired. I know you. All right, so for one fighter, the round mercifully comes to an end as we look back at some of the action. What a display of ground and pound. It's his calling card. It's exactly what he's known for. He's known as a brutal ground and pound fighter, and he showed you just then why he's known as that in the MMA sphere. He's the guy that if he gets you down, he will dominate you with positioning Ready, and brutal, Ready. nasty grounding pound. Round three of a possible five. Two strike lands there, and somehow his opponent's chin held up. His opponent's chin held up, but you do not want to be on the receiving end of those types of strikes. Well, we wondered earlier why there weren't as many body strikes. He's making up for lost time here. Shot to the body connects, and that bear's watching. That's going to hurt this opponent. Back to the leg kick now. That one's no good. Oh, my goodness. Takedown defense holds up. That was just a gorgeous shot to end the fight right there. I'm not even sure the opponent really saw it coming. So back to the drawing board for him. But for the winner, this is certainly exactly what he was looking for here tonight. All right, we now go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop to this contest at one minute, 19 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by knockout and 